you once again from DBT Northeast Center for Agricultural Biotechnology, Assam Agricultural University, Jorhat. Well, uh, welcome to the webinar series towards uh, outcome based biotech research and education a roadmap. Mm. We started this series in this month, 5th of June. Today's speaker is Dr. Manus Prasad. I think many of you know him personally. Very friendly guy, first thing. Uh, so he is from a senior scientist from NIPGR, New Delhi, National Institute of Plant Genomic Research, New Delhi. And he'll be giving his speech on mainstreaming uh, underutilized crops, the study of foxtail millets. Is it Hindi? What do you foxtail millets? Kangni. 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 Okay. Kangni millets. I think this is the second most important millets yeah. in the country after Basra, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So Monos, as I said, he's a senior scientist in NIPG here. Let me uh, briefly introduce Dr. Monos, though many of you know him. He did his PhD from Calcutta University and postdoc from Institute of Plant Genetics and Crop Plant Research, uh, Germany. So he is a JC Bose National Fellow right now. Currently, he is serving as JC Bose National Fellow, which has been offered by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, since 2018. He is fellow of all academy, academias. He is fellow of Indian National Science Academy 2017, National Academy of Agricultural Science 2013, and National Academy of Sciences India since 2012. Congratulations. It's very rare. And he is a recipient of several awards, of course, but, uh, but here to mention that he is a recipient of Tata Innovative Fellowships from DBT 2016. And he is also awarded with the National Biosciences Award, which is also given by DBT in 2014. And he is editorial board member of almost many of the, most of the journals, in fact. So, but he, uh, just to mention here a few of them, PLOS One, then Nature Scientific Reports, BMC Plant Biology, et cetera. So all leading journals, he is an editorial board member. And he is visiting scientist in Department of Plant Pathology, University of Minnesota, USA. So with this brief introduction, he's, a, he's having a very long list of many other awards and all. I'm not going to mention everything. So with this brief introduction, May I request Dr. Manus to deliver his lecture? Thank you very much. Please, Manus. Yes. So, good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I would like to uh, thank the organizer of this web series on Towards Outcome Based Agri Biotech Education and Research, a roadmap by DBT, NECAB, Assam Agriculture University, Jorhat, Assam, for providing me an opportunity to talk you about my work in front of you. As you know, the nation or the entire world is facing such a difficult situation due to this pandemic spread, but we proved that our academia is unstoppable and we keep organizing such online programs to keep the scientific community engaged in active research and providing research updates. I appreciate the participants also who are gathered in large numbers to prove that nothing can stop us from learning. And I hope this webinar series provides you an updated information on the roadmap for outcome-based education and research. Today, my topic has relevance to the ongoing uh, issue of hunger and malnutrition. However, I would be talking more about the genomics part of crop improvement with Foxton Millet as an example. So without taking your time any further, I am moving further onto my topic that is mainstreaming underutilized crops, the story of fox and millet. As you know, the humans are the last one to evolve on this earth, but we are leading the game in terms of number as of on yesterday, this time 
our population count was 7.7 .7 billion and experts predict that it will reach 10 billion by 2050. So to this population, we have assigned three things as the basic needs, namely food, shelter, and clothes. We have been told that without these three needs, survival of the human is not easy. But if you ask whether all the 7.7 billion gets the three basic needs, then the answer is no. 8 to 21 million are still hunger. For every 10 seconds, a child dies for, from hunger related causes, and one in four of the world's children suffer from malnutrition, which altogether means that getting food alone will not serve the purpose by getting nutrition food will. If you see the global hunger index data of 2019, the Africa's and the South Asia, including India, are still in the danger zone of hunger irrespective of several steps being taken, including the Green Revolution. Adding to this, the global report on food crisis for the year 2020 shows that 135 billion people living in 55 different countries are facing acute food insecurity. This report was released before the incidence of COVID-19, and it is expected that the number would have been now increased due to several reasons, including lack of income and economic constraints among the virulent population. This slide shows the statistics on the effect of food insecurity among children. The joint malnutrition estimates shows that 144 million children under five years of age are stunted, 47 million are too thin, and 38 million are obese. If you see the percentage of stunted children, South Asia has moved than 30% of stunted children than amount to 55.9 million children. In case of wasted or two thin children, again, we top the 14.3%, which amount to 25.2 million children. So realizing the grave situation and to build a better world for people at all level by 2030, the United Nations formulated 70 sustainable goals, among which three are directly related to food. This underlines the severity of the issue we are talking about. When it comes to food, I want to show an impact, important issue, the largest and most Diverse botanical garden in Q estimated that uh, there are 11 lakh vascular plants. Among these 7,000 were used as food by early humans, which in due course of time sunk through just three crops, namely rice, wheat, and maize. These two crops, either more than 50% of world population. In addition, there are 12 more crops of plants that altogether with five animal species supplement 75% of world food. That is where we say that it is the high time to focus on men saving the underutilized crop for food and nutritional security. And for that, using next generation genomics tool for trade improvement in this crop. If the participant wants to know more about more information on what I'm speaking today, they may refer to our article published in Advances in Genetics last year, 2019, that is known as that multi-omics approaches for strategies improvement of stress tolerance in underrepresented species during climate change perspective. Coming to the first part of my talk, mainstreaming underrepresented crop for food and nutritional security, as you can see, that uh, there are several uh, crops are uh, known to be underutilized because when they are cultivated in certain region and consumed by a marginal population, these species could be fewer legumes, leafy vegetables, and minor millets. In case of uh, tubers, there are a few examples like taro, arrowroot, Indian shoot, ganola, parthalium, air potato, elephant food. 
in case of legumes there are wing bean jack bean bambara groundnut kidney bean fava bean lima bean coffee horse gram rice bean velvet bean and ajuki bean in case of small or minor millet finger millet foxtail millet proso millet little millet banded millet teff hodo millet ponio job steer bunia millet and brown stock millet so these are the example of all the underutilized crop india is the second largest producer of millet next to china and area wise rajasthan and maharashtra are top but in terms of production tamil nadu uttarakhand and andhra pradesh leads the race if you see the nutritional profiling of millet it clearly shows that millets are rich in protein fat as etc as compared to the staple crop rice and wheat you can see all the blue highlighted one they are much much better than to rice and wheat if you read the nutritional potential of different macro and micro element or uh, millets all the millets are far far superior as compared to the staple crop wheat and rice so if you want to know more about the nutritional profiling you can read our review article in plant science that exploration of millet model for developing nutrition rich gramaceous crop so this is the uh, media report because media nowadays talking more about the uh, millet use in different purpose and these are the snapshot of all the media report so now uh, people are now understanding that this millet are really important for this normal life keeping in view this nutritional potential of millet our central government has declared the uh, all the millet as nutri cereals and united nation has declared the year 2023 as international year of millet coming to the second part of my talk that is the next generation genomics tools for trait improvement in these crops so today i'm going to give you one example how one can develop the genomic resources for this one uh, underutilized crop and people can take as an example and also do the similar kind of uh, exercise for other underutilized crop so why we choose foxton millet because it's a small genome and similar to rice and it deployed short life cycle 60 days to 70 days is the total life cycle and it is very close related to several cereals and bioenergy grasses and most importantly it possesses high degree of adaptation to dry environment and better water and nitrogen use efficiency and more importantly the nutritive value makes uh, all the millets are very important so if you see to produce 1 g of dry biomass of millet it requires only 250 g of uh, water whereas maize and wheat require just double the amount of water so nutritionally biotic abiotic stress tolerant everything is there in all the millet and also required less water better nitrogen efficiency is also there but as compared to the staple crop like maize and wheat so it is better to promote the millet and as compared to rice and wheat so if you wanted to more about this we have uh, published several review article summarizing our work in different uh, international journals so for any crop improvement program you need a good jump plasm connection and followed by screening so what we did we have a core collection of 170 accession that we collected from different parts of the drought prone region of india and as well as different countries so these accessions were collected from nvpgr and they have been seen for drought and dehydration and salinity tolerance on the basis of different physiological and antioxidant enzymes like apx catalyze and glutathione reductase so when we characterize this 170 accession of foxton millet with for dehydration and salinity we group them in four different classes and these are the numbers of different classes the ultimate goal is to identify the contrasting genotype so that we can identify the genes which are responsible for the the dehydration and salinity 
tolerance. And for that, we also import 03579 for more tolerant. And contrastingly, that uh, Lepashi and IC4801117 is a highly sensitive in terms of dehydration and cleanliness. Hello. And Some... we don't have any NGS technology, so we have this. Uh, and for that, uh, we use these two contrasting genotypes for dehydration and salinity. We did the uh, uh, SSH uh, library construction, and then we, when we study the uh, transcriptome profiling of both the stresses of dehydration and salinity, and we found that 182 transcripts uh, from both the libraries were highly upregulated, and when we tried to compare, we found that only 18 out of 100 are common. So we using the same uh, contrasting genotype for percent of common genes, so we suggest that a distinct mechanism to perceive and respond to salt and dehydration stress condition. So we postulated that both uh, dehydration and salinity, their genes are different. So I'm going to give you one example of how uh, the hits of protein uh, uh, play important role in our So uh, in the year 2012, two one from the USA, that and one from China, uh, the Beijing Genome Initiative, the Institute, they have sequenced the Fox and and these are the all these. Uh, information regarding the uh, sequencing, but I'm not going to detail this. Is what I'm going to talk about that how we selected the genes from this uh, sequence information. So when we compare the millet, uh, this box and millet gene with sorghum and maize, we identified around 1,500 are only present in millet, not in other crop. So, this 100 for annotation, we identify more than almost 600 genes. They are functionally responsive to water response. And these are what are the genes? And we choose a small hits of protein, aquaporin, MIP transcription factor, WORKI, and ADP ribosylation factor. So we did uh, some genome study because all these class of genes have more than 100 genes. So we cannot characterize more than 100 genes. So we do some uh, bioinformatics uh, study. We identified some candidate gene based on the expression profiling, and finally, we characterize one gene from each class. So, these hits of protein, as an example, there are five different classes of hits of protein like hits of uh, 60, hits of factor 70, 90, 100, and small hits of factor. So, as we know, that all, all together they form a complex network uh, to maintain uh, the protein homeostasis. So when we check the uh, num total number of HSP in Fox and Millet, we come out with a total of 113 with different numbers for different class of HSPs. So cutting the long story in short, we did a uh, uh, QPCR analysis to identify the more uh, important uh, uh, transcript, which has been differentially expressed in four different uh, stresses like uh, uh, dehydration, heat, cold, and salt. And out of these 37, we found that 29 are very much differentially expressed in four different stages of abiotic stress. And out of these uh, 29, we find out that one single one, which has been expressed in all the four uh, abiotic stress, like dehydration, heat, salt, and, and stress. So this is the profile of this HSP 27 in different states. Like you can see here, 35 fold higher in uh, heat stress, uh, 21 fold higher in uh, cold stress, similarly 47 fold higher in salinity stress, but in dehydration stress, it is uh, almost uh, seven fold. So uh, the next thing what we did to confirm the stress responsive role of this HSP 27, uh, we performed the yeast test. 
And for doing this, uh, HSP27 gene was uh, clone in PYES2 vector. And uh, the recombinant uh, each cell, transgenic cell overexpressing this HIS2 HSP27 showed enhanced tolerance in terms of heat, dehydration, and salinity tolerance. You can see here that when we, the overexpression of HSP27, it can tolerate, but the uh, control wild type was died. Similarly, in heat, uh, dehydration, and salinity. So, overexpressing this HSP27 colonies are happily growing, uh, but the, uh, the wild type is dying. So, we can say that in yeast, at least this gene is working. So, keeping in view of this thing, I'm not showing all this biochemical and physiological uh, study what I have uh, done for this HSP27 for its thermotolerance. But uh, the keeping the long story in short, uh, what we did that uh, to check whether this gene is present in rice or not, because uh, it's, uh, Ditaria is a C4 plant, but rice uh, is a C4 plant, a C3 plant. So when we checked uh, the sequence similarity, we didn't find any much similarity with our Ditaria C4 HSP27 uh, with the rice and wheat. So what we did to confirm its test or responsive role, transgenic rice lines over expressing HSP27 has been generated. And this is the construct and the evaluation of the positive uh, rice lines done in T2 generation. Now we are uh, analyzing in T3. So this is the gut analysis of the leaf of the transgenic rice plant over expressing HSP27. And this is the control. And this is the PCR amplification of the HPT2 gene in the transgenic rice line. So uh, when we check the phenotypic evolution of HSP27 overexpressing rice line, we found that transgenic rice lines showed improved agronomic traits such as plant height. You can see here this is a wild tape and these are the transgenic tree lines, L1, L4, L10. In terms of the number of tillers per plant is much better. Number of panicles per plant, much better in transgenic lines as compared to wild type. Panicle length, number of grain per panicle, so one, two, three, four, five parameters is much better in this transgenic line as compared to wild type. But there is no change in the weight per thousand grain, uh, 100 grains, and uh, length per 10 uh, seeds in centimeters. So we, then we check the evaluation transgenic line for response to uh, this grid uh, uh, test. And you can see here this trans three transgenic line exhibit low ROS in response to head says as, as, as of the wild type uh, where ROS is very high. So when we compare the chlorophyll content of individual chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, and total chlorophyll for these three trans independent transgenic line with the wild type, we found in this, uh, you can see in different color, the, uh, this uh, orange was the control, and this yellow one is the heat for four days, and this green one is the heat for eight days. This is all has been done in the greenhouse control environment, but the highest temperature we put keep it 50 degrees. So in, if you check, see this uh, uh, total chlorophyll content, uh, about 75% of chlorophyll loss was observed in the wild type uh, uh, after eight days of continuous heat. But chlorophyll loss during the heat is completely much less in the transgenic line. So, and we recently filed the Indian patent of this HSP27 uh, gene. So, in conclusion, we can say that uh, this HSP27 was uh, basically upregulated uh, in, uh, in the uh, heat stress, uh, and then and it was localized in the chloroplast. And once it is localized in the chloroplast, it protects and maintains the photosynthetic uh, apparatus and protects the ribosomal integrity and transcription machinery and also maintains the chloroplast integrity. By this way, it provides the more photosynthetic efficiency in the uh, tolerant plant as compared to the uh, wild type. So we also did the overexpression in, uh, in, uh, in Foxton millet and also we have developed the crystal silent transgenic line for HSP27 in Fox and Millet. So uh, as, I, I, as I said in the beginning that uh, one cannot work in all the uh, hundreds of uh, genes. So this is the pipeline we have developed and for uh, narrow down the gene family. 
and for this uh, we find the first we did this uh, identification of gene family members then we identify uh, in silico the gene structure chromosome location duplication and divergence then we analyze the domain architecture phylogeny and physiochemical properties then we analyze the upstream promoter analysis and gene ontology analysis then we did this uh, uh, expression profiling respect to abiotic stress to narrow down the number of genes and then we identify the candidate for overexpression in heterologous system as i showed it in east and by this way we identify 124 genes for the cqs2 type of zinc finger transcription factor and in fox10 millet defined responsive for abiotic stress similarly 209 gene for mib transcription factor uh, 110 gene for worky transcription factor 160 gene for this uh, cell wall related genes because it is also very closely related to the switchgrass and switchgrass is polyploid so the american that's why they wanted to identify the cell wall related genes from this criteria italica so that they can uh, through comparative genomics, they can isolate, uh, identify heterologous, identify the genes from switchgrass. So uh, similarly, in ADP ribosylation uh, factor for rice and fox millet, like in rice 23 and 25, we identified for fox millet. So recently, we have uh, published one article in Journal of Biotechnology where we have uh, done the genomic dissection and expression analysis of stress responsive genes in c4 panicoid model uh, citaria italica and the uh, wild it is the uh, citaria viridi so all this information whatever we have generated we 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 we, we develop a database for that and and this is the integrated pipeline for transcription factors database study and you can see here these are all the transcription factor in bracket you will get the numbers of the total number of transcription factor for each class so this is the uh, uh, transcription factor database uh, a transcription database for expediting the functional genomic study in millet where you can do browse you can do blast you can there is a tutorial how to use the database and if you have any problem you can also contact us so uh, that this is the pipeline we use to develop the large scale market uh, development and what we did we used the transcriptome data from the uh, uh, in, uh, from the database and then we used the coding sequence to by using the misa pipeline to identify the microsatellite market and for uh, uh, non coding gene the intronic sequence we use the ilp pipeline for identifying the ilp market so by this way we have developed thousands of uh, different kinds of molecular markers and for genotyping assay and they have been published in a high impact journal dna research and fast one similarly this is uh, uh, how we have developed the retro transposable based uh, markers uh, transposable element based marker we use the uh, genomic data from the database and then we divided this uh, uh, with, the, with the LTR finder, like class one retro transcription, which are LTR and non LTR, copia, copia and gypsy comes under LTR, lines and signs from non LTR, similarly type class two DNA transposition, these are different classes. And these are the different four types of uh, uh, transposable element based marker we have developed. And altogether, more than 20,000 markers, uh, transposable element based marker has been developed for doing the genotyping assay. So uh, when we compare the different types of markers, uh, this is a comparative mapping with rice maize sorghum and biotic podium, and, and we found that uh, these markers are very highly transferable. For example, you can see here more than 80% are transferable among the millet, and around 50% markers we have found that are transferable for the microRNA-based markers. So this is very important uh, because if you work with the gene-based markers, uh, that will uh, uh, then the job of your half more than half because once you tightly find a linkage between this the micro and base marker or the gene based marker then you can know the function of that mar that uh, marker so uh, these are the uh, study in terms of cross general transferability and the percent polymorphism so what are the application of this genomic resources whatever in terms of molecular marker what we develop we use them for assistant mapping in fox template in terms of yield related traits so you can see here there are 20 yield related traits as a days to flowering flag wet leaf and these are the markers which are 
has been identified in different chromosomes and the R squared, the phenotypic variation. For example, the flag leaf width, uh, that is the one phenotypic trait uh, identified by one SSR marker P59, which is present in chromosome 7, and his, which can explain about one fourth of the phenotypic variation. It means that if the uh, QTL is 100%, uh, then this marker, P59 for microsurface marker, which is present in chromosome 7, can explain 25% of the total variation if the trait is 100%. So, this is a major QTL, I can say. Similarly, for grain weight, the marker B260 on chromosome 1 has one fourth variation. So, these are the different publications of the genomic resources and the application, as I said, the population structure analysis and mapping of yield contribute to genomic traits in Fox and Millet by using these genomic resources that we have developed more than 5,000 internal length polymorphic markers in Fox and Millet, more than 20,000 uh, uh, transposable element based markers in Fox and Millet. And we also use the GWAS, Genome Wide Association Study, for yield contributing agronomic traits. As I said, we have 170 accession. We have done the extensive phenotyping in terms of uh, agronomic traits. And then we use this uh, SNP platform for this uh, Genome Wide Association Study. And this is the technology. I'm not going in details about the technology, but the, using this technology, we have identified almost 30,000 SNP in this uh, GWAS study. And maximum SNP was found on chromosome 8 with 53 SNP per MB and minimum on chromosome 9, 63. And this is the genome wide distribution of the SNP on different nine chromosomes of Fox and Miller, starting from chromosome 1 to chromosome 9. So, when we did this uh, GWAS study uh, for uh, identification of the uh, QTL trait association of the different agronomic traits, you can see here there's a flowering. Of, uh, and high killer number so different and we identified 81 marker trait association involving 79 SNP were identified for different agronomic traits in Fox and Millet. So and we also identified several uh, genes that has been linked with this flag leaf width and then grain uh, yield and thousand grain weight. And these are the uh, function of this P2D function of this SN gene and these are the allele uh, favorable allele, which is linked to the trait of the interest, and this is the position, this is the chromosome number of these uh, identified markers, SNP. So, similarly, we also did for this the micronutrient. As I said, the millets are good in micronutrients, so we try to identify the genes, which is uh, basically uh, responsible for these different uh, micronutrients in terms of potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, manganese, nickel, boron phosphorus, zinc, and iron, and we identified 74 marker trait association were identified for the 10 different micro nutrient elements. And similarly, uh, we also identified several SNP and we scored for different candidate gene on different chromosomes and also the SNP which is linked to this. And this was a recently published last year Journal of Serial Science. So, what are the markers like SNP, uh, uh, our transposable element based marker, then this uh, SSR based marker, internal and polymorphy marker? So, we have developed different kinds of uh, marker database. This is a, a Fox and Millet marker database where we have uh, deposited all the resources. And uh, just I want to give you one uh, timeline story of how one can transform an orphan form into. Orphan crop into crop of uh, with rich genomic resources. In the year 2012, when we started this work of the development of genomic resources, we found that in the literature only 26 ESC, ESC derived SSR marker and 98 ILP markers were reported, and three genes partially characterized like DRAP, dehydration responsive element binding protein, NAC transcription factor, and WD40. So you can see over the year 2013 to 2017, we have developed more than 20,000 SSR markers, 176 microRNA-based markers, more than 5,000 internal and polymorphy markers, more than 20,000 transposable element-based markers, and these are the different marker database. And similarly, we have characterized several genes like T2S2 gene finger, me, Worky. Today I'm going. I give example of how we have characterized the hits of protein. 
and several secondary cell wall related genes, set domain genes, ADB ribosylation factors. We can get an idea of what we are doing. We have time to time we uh, we also write reviews and we publish in high impact journals like uh, the Bible for this uh, breeding journal uh, in theoretical applied genetics, the advances in cytosine genomics for genetic improvement of cereal and bioenergy grasses. In 2017, uh, I edited one book for Foxtel Millet genome because you know that is all this underutilized crop, less information is available. So I think it is better if we uh, make uh, some uh, book compendium type thing for the underutilized crop so that interested people can also read. We have conducted one uh, uh, a national symposium uh, in UCS FNE that stands for neglected and underutilized crop species for food, nutrition, energy, and environment uh, in, at NIPJ last year, August 2nd, 2019. And, uh, and this is the group uh, which uh, is dedicated to HSP story was the PhD work of uh, Ross and Kumar Singh. Uh, he has submitted a thesis and about to defend his thesis. All the genomic resources has developed by Mutha Bilarishan. He is now faculty assistant professor in University of Hyderabad. And uh, my group also works on tomato. Professor Sunil Mukherjee knows very well. So this is the small group work on uh, uh, millet, but more than 70% uh, of people they work on Germany virus uh, uh, in tomato leaf colony virus. And I must acknowledge the funding solely from, mostly from Department of Biotechnology and 20% from Department of Science and Technology. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I will be happy to answer your question. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Monoj. Now, uh, seminar is open for discussion. So there are two questions already in the question answer box. You can see that first. Okay. In the question answer box, you can answer those two first. Yeah, I'm just trying to find it out. Yeah, it is. It is in the in uh, at the bottom. Just, if you go, uh -huh. the first one is millet millet products. It's from uh, Kanwar Pal Singh Dhaliwal. Millet production has been decreased since previous years. What could be the uh -huh. possible reasons for that? Even new generation is now dependent upon fast food and all even they are avoiding traditional food that is wheat too. What Rashad, could sir, be the uh, to this? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Hello, sir. Could you just talk? Say, say, uh, Monos, you, you can talk a little closer to your microphone. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So this a, is a military. Ah, yes, I, I got yes. the point that the millet production has been decreased since yes. previous year. What could be the possible reason for that? Even new generation is now dependent upon the fast food and all, even they are avoiding traditional food that is wheat tool. What could be the solution to this? So you know that uh, before Green Revolution in 1962, uh, in most of the places if you see that in the marginal land where the rainfall is very less, uh, the uh, villagers they used to grow all kinds of millets actually. Finger millet is the most prominent and then uh, onion millet and then other all sorts of millet because they thought that uh, due to the water scarcity, uh, they, they, all this millet doesn't require any, any care actually. <clears throat> they don't need much water, they don't need any fertilizer to grow and as I showed the nutritionally, they are much much superior than rice and wheat and maize. So, uh, so these are the things, but the thing is this, that the problem of this millet is that rancidity. So if you keep the millet uh, dough for a longer period, it, it was a bitter in taste. So if you use it in fresh, and that can give a good result. But uh, if you keep uh, for a longer duration, it give you a bitter taste. So taste is one of the most important. That's why uh, the uh, the IIMR, I said, instituted in, uh, in Hyderabad, the Institute of Millet Research. They have a separate unit for this production of this different millet uh, food, and they have standardized, and you will get ragi biscuit. You will get all the ragi doses. These are not bitter. They are very good to taste. 
and now it is uh, people are mixing with these um, or different millets with uh, rice flour or wheat flour so that uh, you will get all the nutrition from this millet uh, while uh, by ma making a multi grain kind of thing so multi grain uh, uh, dao uh, that uh, flour uh, from wheat is also a combination of different millets and legumes also so this way i think uh, is uh, people are thinking that one can uh, but regarding millet production uh, decrease pbs uh, here this is this is not uh, correct because in tamil nadu i know southern part uh, they are producing more uh, millet because they are exporting them because they are getting more price from the international market by exporting so if you want to buy a millet product from your any uh, supermarket you will get more than 100 rupees a kg or 200 rupees a kg okay but whereas in, in in 50 rupees you will get a rice one kg of rice but not you will get millet because they are not uh, available because they are all are exporting outside and they are getting much more money for that okay sir, which type of, uh, okay so second question is which type of market give more accuracy from uh, so it depends uh, on this because ssr are the, uh, the actually uh, microcellulite marker are the best because they are co dominant and you can rely on that and but if you want to study the phylogeny and the evolution then the transposable element based markers signs lines uh, all these kinds of can be used so purpose you need to uh, ask your purpose which purpose you want to use for the market rate association snps are the now at the best because you can use the thousands of snp but ssr is also good if you are using a traditional market the ragi is back in color and uh, black in color and people don't prefer that to modify you can do okay so uh, you know that that that's the reason i am saying it. so uh, color is again a problem for our uh, consumer so uh, now they are mixing with some 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 other uh, flour so ragi if you go to south, southern part of india you can tell us the ragi dosa uh, they will give you ragi dosa but that is a brownish in color now not in black in now it is brownish in color but the good thing is this don't go for color go for the nutritive nutritive value because all these millets are good for type 2 diabetic people you know that the glycemic index is less than 50 if we compare with rice and other cereals so that is the reason that uh, due to presence of good rice and fat all the millets uh, uh, has a very good uh, uh, less actually uh, that uh, glycemic index and uh, Uh, keeping in view this thing, uh, I think people uh, will much prefer this uh, millet uh, product. You will get ragi biscuit because they are very popular actually. In, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's a, it's acceptance only. People's acceptance yeah, because yeah. earlier biscuits were all you know light golden or something like that. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. white is in color. But yeah. nowadays all dark color biscuits are coming up. Dark yeah, chocolate yeah. is coming up. You know, so dark yeah, color. Yeah. Can I, can I really, people are taking. Yeah. uh dr mukherjee please yes sir please you know, monoj uh, the, uh, you reported about 117 micro rna markers 176 yeah 76 100. yeah yeah and that's an you know remarkably yeah. large number how many total micro rna you have in fox millet so uh, it is around uh, actually 180 or 200 around 200 so out of 180 uh, you have Gotten micro RNA marker of 176. What what exactly no, no, I, you mean by micro RNA marker? No, that to the precursor sequence. We have used the precursor sequence to. So these are the micro RNA that we have gotten. Yes, but, yes, yes. Uh, you have not tagged. You have not tagged the functional aspect of that, right? No, no, no. We have not tagged. So we just micro RNA uh, marker won't won't be the right term to to pronounce. because from the micro rna sequence we have developed the precursor sequence of that has you know something uh -huh. to do with uh, tuls tv ndv resistance so mm -hmm. uh, when you say marker so it has to mark something the other yeah, question is 
since yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the no, other question is uh, sir, 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 for that marker thing, why we are telling marker? Because we have done the uh, uh, that uh, polymorphism study between the uh, contrasting uh, genotype, and then we yeah. also check the transferability. That's why we are taking, uh, calling it a marker because we know that fifty percent can give uh, get the polymorphism. No, mark, can you can you can you specifically link to the? No, no, we have not done that. We have not done that. Okay, uh, Monos. Yeah. That you know, you talked about the histress oh, okay. resistance gene uh -huh. that you that you overexpressed in rice. You know. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, so is, is that, that also that way, endogenously no. present uh, in in it, rice? It, it, okay. It, it, there is some overlapping. Sorry, sir. Some overlapping is going on. Yep. I'm leaving now. Please, you you can complete, sir. I thought you you completed. All right. Uh, what I would like to know that uh, the microRNA producing enzymes like DCLs. So mm -hmm. uh, in the fox millet, what kind of enzymes are present and how many? Sir, uh, enzymes in terms of uh, microRNA? Yes. Like how many DCLs are present? Ah, and that, how many uh, DCL subtypes are present? Yeah, 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 yeah. That we have done the study, but exactly I don't know the uh, can, can I do not tell you the exact number, but it is almost similar to rice. The number, whatever we present in uh, oxygen millet, mm. is similar to rice. The uh, DCL and other uh, this kind of thing. So okay. almost similar to rice, not uh, okay. just difference between uh, two or three years in, in different classes. DCL or okay. AGO or whatever you tell all these different classes. No, not the AGO. Right. I'm talking about only DCL. DCL. Okay. Uh, so your so voice is breaking. DCL two, DCL three, DCL. Sir, voice is breaking. You know, Sir, you, 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 you can come a little closer. Ten millet. Is there ah. a specific DCL one? Hello. Sorry? Huh, your voice is cracking. So can you please come a little closer? Manoj, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Now can yes, I now, can now it's okay. Yeah. Okay. You, can you, you hear you come me? Closer. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. Go uh, ahead. What I would like to know is, is uh, in Fox Millet, is DCL1 uh. is the only enzyme that makes microRNA or there are associated uh, enzymes also? So that I have to check, sir. I, I I don't know exactly because that analysis we have not done. But the number-wise, it is similar to rice. What I know. Total DCL, okay. So but, total uh, DCL. For, for microRNA making, you know, there has to be a specialized apparatus. Yes, yes, yes. That way, I I cannot comment on that. Thank you. Oh. Okay, okay Monos. So yeah. I can continue with my question now. Yes. yes. Uh, fox millets, uh, foxtail millets, normally they are found to be resistant against drought as well as salinity, if I am not wrong. All, all abiotic and biotic All abiotic stress, stress. All yes. The, yes. Yeah. And then you, you are working with the heat stress, right? Right now? Yes. Uh, yeah. So, and then you made some transgenic rice, okay? Yes. And yes. Uh, to look for its, you know, efficiency. Uh, yes. But whether that, uh, you said overexpressing that gene, you know, in rice. So mm -hmm. is that gene also endogenously present, you know, similar gene in, in rice or the, do you find that in rice as well, endogenously? Yeah. I'm not hearing you now. Are you, are you saying something? Hello? Your Dr. voice David, is not- He's saying yeah. something which is not audible. Yeah. Sir, sir, only 30% genes are uh, basically common between uh, this HSP 27. Yes. And, uh, How about this gene? Did you look? Did you look at rice? You know whether it is endogenously ah, yeah, yeah. there. So it is there, but yeah. not uh, the similarity or uh, sequence similarity is less than 30%. Yeah, but you know, similar. Uh, there is sequence difference. That's fine. You know. So yeah. uh, that is why rice is not that you know heat tolerant compared to your exactly, Fox exactly. millet. Yeah, but for overexpressing now, you know what kind of promoter you used for overexpression? So that can can, can become thirty five. Oh, okay. Coliform mosaic virus thirty five yeah, yeah, yeah. promoter. Yeah, yeah, 
Okay. Yes, yes. That you use. And then, you know, marker gene, what do you use for marker gene? HPT, sir. HPT2. HPT. Okay. Uh -huh. And you say that chlorophyll loss in the rice is uh, in, in non transgenic, it is 75% uh, chlorophyll loss, but in transgenic. In the wild type. In the, in the wild in the, type. Sorry, in the, yes, that is non transgenic, in a wild type. 75% yeah. uh -huh. chlorophyll loss. But you said in uh -huh. transgenic, it is uh, very less. Uh -huh. So what is very less means what, what did you see some losses there as well? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, what, yeah, what what was the what was the frequency there of the loss so, frequency? If, you, Percentage? If, if I show you the picture, then I just think, I'm, I'm trying to understand, you know, how much difference you really got. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Yeah, if you if I show it here. So uh, it is a 75% loss in the wild type. Yeah, and uh, this is, uh, it is, uh, I think, uh, uh, 20% as compared to 70%. Okay, that's what, 20%. You, you, there yeah. was still loss in transgenics. Yeah, yeah, that is yeah, the yeah. best baseline you got, right? 20% uh, loss. Uh, yeah, yeah, the the baseline you got. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, this is just a general question I would like to know. Suppose wheat versus millet economy. How do you, how do you think, you know, wheat versus millets, you know? Uh, because, you know, millets are now, they are being used as uh, a, you know, in multigrain, atta, bagara, me, millet, millets mm -hmm. are being used, right? Yeah, so, yeah, but you know, how do you see, you know, what is the coverage right now? Uh, not only the foxtail millets, millets as a whole, uh, what is the area? And then, you know, how do you see the economy, you know, from yeah, the production no, point of view and then cost, you know, from, uh, that will be, uh, so economy that will be gained by the farmers, you know, if they go for millets, you know, instead of wheat, because millets are nutri nutritionally, they are more, you know, efficient than, you know, wheat. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All yeah. The, yeah. So, you know, how do you, that's what my question is, you know, how do you see the wheat millet, you know, economy? Comparison, actually. Yes, actually. yes, yes. So, yes. If, you, if you see the area average cover, area under cultivation for all these major cereals, you will find that uh, the maize is number one and then wheat and then rice. So, uh, so in this case, millets are uh, at the bottom, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. Eight and nine position as compared yeah. to this second crop. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that is one of the main reasons why the production is less because uh, the area uh, under cultivation is very less as compared mm. to uh, no would you government. advocate for enhancing the millet area yeah. you know that's that's so, what my question so that is the reason why in the last year we have done this uh, under press of uh, symposium and we have submitted a white paper to the uh, the, the genetic agency dbt and other stuff that we are advocating and uh, the good thing is this the government of tamil nadu and hmm. government of Karnataka. These are the yeah. two states, I can tell you. They are promoting and they are giving money to the farmer so that they can give boosting so that they can leave the rice and other yeah. major crops and they should cultivate this thing. Actually. Yes, so, yes, good. The area under production in the southern part of India is certainly increased in the last five years as compared to the major crops, uh, rice and uh, mainly rice there grow and other also legumes. But uh, now, now area under cultivation in southern part uh, of millet is increased dramatically. Okay. Okay. Good. So, mm -hmm. other questions, please. Yeah. I, I will come back to Bidhu's first question. Yeah. Uh, he wanted to know the homology between yes uh, the twenty-seven yeah. that you introduced in rice. So yeah. rice will have many uh, HSPs. HSP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. Right. and and uh, if you do the homology analysis, I believe many of them will have similar sequences. Mm -hmm. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Or, sir, or, sir, when, or when we HSP compare... is highly divergent in sequence. Yeah, highly divergent, sir. Less than 30% similarity, sir. Between, uh, because the, this foxtail uh, HSP okay. so, is a C4 and uh, rice is C3. Uh, even if you have... No, 30% similarity when you overexpress a gene, you know, uh, you might expect some silencing of the endogenous genes. Do yeah. you see that at all? 
Now, the, sir, the first question is that when we uh, did a, 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 that PCR based uh, amplification for all the C3 and C4 for the HSP 27, we didn't find any amplification of any of the C4, C3 grasses like rice, wheat. There, there is no amplification of HSP, uh, Fox HSP 27. So but in all the C4, C4, C4 but yeah. there is 30 percent homology, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 30 percent homology is there. Yeah, no, I means yeah, you have if... 30 percent homology, and since you are over expressing a gene, you should mm -hmm. expect some kind of sense transgene silencing. Uh, because there is, a, there is a homology or similar gene is there. That's what my question was actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that we have not checked till sir. Uh -huh. Huh. Means you know in the transonics you can check that you know again using yeah, yeah. the same you know PCR markers you know if you try to check that you know mm -hmm. uh, in transonic rice now yeah yeah and then if there is thirty percent similarity you know the sequence now so yeah, you yeah, can yeah. design the primers accordingly you know and then you mm -hmm. can see yeah 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 anyway there are many other questions please you know you can some Mohamaya Banik is asking oh there's black color okay that's fine. Some Aparna Kumari want to work with molecular markers in plants. You know, this very general question, of course, this kind of questions, you know, you can ask by emailing because, you know, Manus has already yeah, given yeah, yeah. the email, yeah, his yeah. email ID. So, you know, you can very well ask about this kind of questions uh, by email. So here we'll prefer more, you know, specific questions about today's presentation. Yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, I see. There is one more question I have seen now. Some GJ. Uh, okay, about the mutants. He's asking about HSP twenty-seven mutants. Mm -hmm. no, Do you but, have some uh, phenot no, phenotype in mutant? Phenotype mutant in the sense that transgenic lines, the, the chlorophyll content and other uh, photosynthetic uh, uh, the physiological parameters, they are performing much better than the wild type. So, but the mutant uh, in terms of uh, transgenic line or what? No, I think he is asking about the, in, in the wild type, you know, it may, no, not in wild type, that is in, 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 in foxtail millets. For that particular gene, you know, mutants for that particular gene. Oh, oh. that is a totally Fox different study, you know. That is a totally different study. I think, yeah, just to see, you know. In foxtermate, we just try to do the same thing what we have done for uh, rice actually, because that uh, is on the T1 generation in foxtermate millet, both for overexpression and for the CRISPR one. Hmm. And then. There is another question. Yeah, you can you can check, Manos. Oh, the sir, government is not giving permission to the transgenic plant. How can we proceed for the further research? But this is a government policy that. Uh, but science is always uh, should go on because we want to do good science to know the be better way how the biology works. That's why you are doing. But uh, releasing transgenic, it is purely on the government policy. We, I am not commenting on that. But uh, for for the betterment of science, we want to know the gene function, how the gene works. Uh, that's why we are doing uh, all this biotechnological or overexpression study. Hmm. Okay. Uh, then Manob Bikas Gogo is asking one question. What, uh, can you send Elaborate the... how heat shock protein 27 was uh, localized into chloroplast of rice. Oh, they... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was we have done the like the more standard molecular biology thing that uh, uh, only an epidermal one cell uh, study actually by that uh, by through confocal microscopy. So I have not shown uh, the participant about the, all these uh, biochemical and physiological study of this HSP27, how it is showing the heat stability. When we, uh, I can say, talk about a little bit that when we uh, increase the temperature to check the, uh, the how this protein was behaving, we found that its protein is not dissociating, it is compact. 
and when we uh, when we put it in the uh, room temperature after increasing the temperature up uh, then to the room temperature it can gain up to 60% of its enzyme activity that this kind of study we have done for this hsp27 to so that it is the hsp hits of uh, protein now mono so uh -huh. i think he is asking he is asking what kind of chloroplast targeting signal you have added oh okay then we have to ask the roshan kumar singh <laughs> the what kind of the, that uh, tag who has has given to this actually so i i i can i can i can mail him what uh, what kind of uh, the, uh, that uh, tag he has used for this uh, this for uh, for identifying this chloroplast supply so i think that uh, we have used uh, some uh, uh, mitochondrial marker some uh, chloroplast specific marker and some other organ specific marker to check which one is the correct one so now i remember yes so it was localized in the chloroplast because it was showing in the uh, band in the chloroplast uh, marker that known marker but not in the mitochondria or the other uh, organal marker anything else sir hello you, hello yes yes sir we are yes, sir. we are all hearing you your yes, answer yes. yeah 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 so i am just uh, trying to find out any other questions you know yes there are some other questions yeah somebody is asking about you no know, sending slides by email but as per ah. you know it's up to of course oh, monoj but no no but this is already recorded anybody can see it yeah i know we we are going to upload this in youtube you know slide exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. we are going to send but you know we are going yeah. to upload because you know earlier presentations also we have already uploaded in the youtube yeah, so yeah. this is also yeah, yeah, we are going is. to upload in the youtube uh, we have a uh, specific site for our center in the youtube you know uh, we, we have been have a youtube yeah, yeah. page you know you can just go through that okay mm -hmm. so uh somebody is asking what is the status of release of this trans you know this is just a i think monos yeah you can answer this question yeah status of release of this transgenic fox tail millet so look uh, as you know that uh, the uh, the one from professor pentel of, of in brasica that is struggling so i am not in 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 the race of releasing this i am just going for the uh, doing the science to know better about the gene function and other stuff yeah. uh, how it is behaving so i am not uh, in the race of uh, releasing any transgenic other stuff at present this the, is a functional uh, genomic study no more about know, the science obviously. yeah it's a functional yeah. genomic yeah. study at present but you know if we really get some good you know changes or you know useful changes then definitely monos can think of that as well in later yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so and we we also over express our hsp27 in barley and wheat also i have given this gene to yeah. two of my colleagues uh, so that they are also trying it in barley and wheat because all these are all c3 plants so the yes. gene is from c4 so they can also try so is there any virus that attacks fox millet that there is one but uh, we have uh, not seen in indian perspective uh, but in the other countries uh, uh, there are uh, two or three but in india there is no such as such problem in biotic stress related Ouch. because all the millets are very sturdy crops so they are they are very very hard they are hardy hardy crop they actually grow in a marginal land so there is no need of any kind of care they don't need water they don't need any fertilizer they can grow in the marginal so land it, it will be a good idea to extract the you know virus inhibiting information from fox millet so, so that you can you know, use it you know that there is one fox tail mosaic virus they use the for the vix study in the in a monocot okay okay yeah so that is that is widely used as like a fox tail mosaic virus so that is that found in india also or not yet No, 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 no. So we don't have that. We don't have. That. Yeah. So we are getting a lot of feedback, huh, Manoj? You know, people are yeah. liking uh, the web series, and then also this particular webinar. Somebody is asking about if you have 
you know any feedback form we do not have exactly any feedback form but you know you are all most welcome to put your feedback in our youtube you know afterwards you know rubjiti is going to upload this in youtube you can write sir i i can give you uh, recently on 8th of june we uh, we conducted one uh, webinar for, from the university of hyderabad and we have made one of uh, the feedback form i can okay. send it to you so that you can yeah then we can upload the, that you know if you all have yes, already made it then please send it to uh, us and then you know we can upload that feedback yeah, form yeah, also that will be we have that, that's a good suggestion thank you very much and okay. on that day sir more than 500 people participants were there on 8 ha ha good 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 so uh, yeah we also had registered participants 1000 plus now but uh, okay. maybe today about you know 175 participants uh, were there but that's a good number yeah, yeah. not is being at remote place <laughs> yes, yes yeah no no not <laughs> anyway uh, not remote in uh, not remote anymore i would guess no not, i don't remote yeah, but you know people use that's why i am just mentioning you know because monos when he conducted that his talk from delhi there were 500 but when we conducted his talk from north east we have you know 175 Okay. <laughs> Maybe this 175 is more specialized. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But 175 very active participants we got. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any more question? Otherwise, you know, we'll wind up here. Uh, Dr. Modi, would you like to say something? If you are still here. I am. I am here. I am here. Okay. Okay. I have been listening. Uh, uh, to the whole talk and i did not like to make any comment because already very lively discussion was going on mm -hmm. uh, i will only do what i normally do is thank the speaker manoj kumar for his excellent presentation and also all the panelists as well as all the participants especially dr sunil bharji uh, and all the panelists and all the participants for the lively discussion uh, i hope that in the future seminars webinars also we will get this kind of response Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Modi. But this... we will miss the tea, though. Uh huh. Sorry, sir. We will miss the tea, though. Ah, uh, yeah. That's what. That's what I. That was. That's what I was going to mention. These web seminars are so good, you know, and then we really get good number of participants, you know. But yeah, only yeah. problem is that we cannot offer a cup of tea. And in fact, I have been taking my tea here because it's my tea time. Four o'clock is my tea time in my office. So, but you know, it's unfortunate that I cannot offer tea to anybody. Anyway. T throw air, you know. You can please have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or throw web. Okay, so give big hands to Dr. Manoj Kumar, Manoj Sir, Manoj Prasad, <laughs> once again, and thanks to all participants. And see you Thank on twenty second. Twenty second, we will be having uh, a very renowned rice geneticist, Dr. Adam Price from University of Aberdeen. So we'll be having his talk at uh, you know three uh, o'clock. In the, in the evening. Yes, please. Twenty second. Yes. Sorry. Twenty second. Twenty second. Our adjourned meeting of academic council will be on twenty second. I don't think that we will be able to attend that. Neither you nor me. But at, that is at three o'clock. Will it, will it be a problem? Otherwise, you know, we'll change the date to postpone the date to twenty third. Change the date because if it is, that's a academic council is going to be long. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you know we can. we can have it on 23rd then we can change the date of course we will have to ask dr price also because he is very busy guy and dr price is our collaborator uh, with our rice program so he has been collaborating with assam agricultural university for, for quite long now so i i'm hoping lot of participations this time okay thank you very much have a have a thank, good day you, good sir. evening you. you know those who are participating from outside maybe good morning for some okay yeah, thank yeah. you very much oh, nice job thank you thank good. you sir Bye bye